quick disclaimer with this video. It was supposed to go live on Tuesday, but I've had a hell of a last week and a half, and making this video was kind of more of an arduous process than normal, so I apologize. But I'm really happy with it, and I hope you enjoy it. Hello world of YouTube, and welcome to another list video in celebration of a new Mortal Kombat movie dropping this weekend. Uh, Mortal Kombat being one of my favorite uh, video game franchises, not just within fighting games, but of all time, as exhibited in a list that, honestly, we should probably use a good update, maybe sometime in the future. I'm going to break down my favorite uh, list of my 11 favorite Mortal Kombat characters. Now, you may be wondering, why am I, outside of loving Mortal Kombat, why am I hyper-focusing on their characters? Why don't I do stages like I did in my Super Smash Bros. video? Well, because Mortal Kombat was the first franchise to have these characters that had this wealth of story and lore behind them, more so than your Street Fighters or your really odd knockoffs of Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter that were burgeoning at the time. You know, it had this wealth of lore and these worlds and these, you know, everybody's different motives surrounding around this fighting game tournament felt much more dynamic than uh, other fighting games that had come before it. You know, and I feel like it helped spawn the idea of lore within a fighting game. A lot, at least a lot deeper lore than just, I'm in it for my family. I'm in it for my friends. I'm in it for power. And I really appreciate that about Mortal Kombat. It's one of the things that I also really love about it, you know? That's one of the reasons why, when I did the stream last week and my marathon, I played Deception. <laughs> you know? Because that shit makes a difference in Mortal Kombat. Like, straight up. Because Deception was like a good slice of you really exploring the worlds of Mortal Kombat in a cool way. And so today, I'm going to be breaking down my top 11 favorite characters and why. Now you may be wondering, Johnny with a ponytail and a hat on now, what is your criteria for this list? Well, I'm going to be talking a lot about backstories and move sets and just general character design. Those are kind of all going to be the contributing factors to why I like these characters over others in the series. You know, I really appreciate the detail that some go to, or that the game developers have gone into making their stories, and I feel like if their moveset's a good companion to that, or if they just work well with other characters in a cool concept, that's all gonna kind of factor in to the inclusions that I made onto this list. And that's about it. Let's, let's get, let's get, let's get going. You know, while I like some of the additions of the most recent games like Cassie Cage and Jackie Briggs and Farrah Tor and even Aaron Black, Aaron Black was actually the last omission I made to this list, and I'll admit, I've got a small, I've got a soft spot for Havoc from Deception. You're not going to see any newer characters than the Deadly Alliance Roundup, and Kenshi is a blind swordsman who has psychic abilities and kicks a hell of a lot of ass. His combos are really cool to see if you're melding in the uh, the psychic pushes and pulls in with his great combos. His combos look really neat. His design is cool. It's got very classic Daredevil vibes in a cool way. And his story is really nice. You know, in the old games, or at least in the, in the old lore, he was just this guy who was cursed by Shang Tsung and was blinded from it, but also did a really good deed at freeing Ermac from Shao Kahn's control. That's sick as hell, and Ermac is another character that I really enjoy, and I, I like that he and Kenshi have this sort of dynamic together. They pair really well together. Um, but I also like that in the new lore, they gave him a family. You know, he was inclu I like that they included him in the new lore, because you didn't, like, I don't know how many people gauge the Deadly Alliance Deception era, but, like, I could see there's a lot of bad characters in that era, and I'll talk about that maybe in a video in the future. But I like that Kenshi was one of the characters that stuck it out, because I do think he's a cool character. I think he's got a good design, and I think that giving him a family in the newer games gives him even more motive and flushes him out as a person even more that I think is cool. Plus, again, just kick-ass kick -ass look, kick-ass combos, and some cool special abilities and uh, fatalities that stem from his concept as a character. You know, while tongue in cheekness and goofiness was never a stranger to Mortal Kombat, <laughs> I like that even in the 2000s when they were also trying to tap into that 2000s edginess. You can't kill me. 
they still found a way to inject some comedy into Deadly Alliance with char- with a character like Bo Raicho, who, among other comedic parts of that game... This week on Cooking with Scorpion. Also is just a character that fleshes out parts of the lore in the world within Mortal Kombat in a really satisfying way. You know, it makes sense that Liu Kang and Kung Lao would have a master, and I like that his master is finally just a cementation of part of the game. You know, I like that he has a drunken master fighting style as one of his fighting styles. I think it fits his character. I like his goofy moveset. I like the farts. I think the vomiting's a little weird, but I like how goofy he is. I like how wacky he can be. And if you've seen me play many other games, you know there's always some dummy thick boy in the ranks, and Bo Raicho is the dummy thick boy from Mortal Kombat, and I like, again, that he's just here, and he exists. And I even like how in Deception, he is, again, your master. He is your tutorial throughout the entire beginnings of the game. And again, he's just a nice ease into the world of Mortal Kombat Deception in a way that I think is very satisfying. Like I said with Kenshi, I like the wizards in Mortal Kombat. I think Ermac is really cool. I think Shang Tsung is a nice first enemy in Mortal Kombat. But Quan Chi... When he came into the picture, again, similarly to Bo Raicho, I like that he just fleshes out bits of the world of Mortal Kombat more. Hell, he was introduced in one of the side games of the series and became just a permanent dickhead throughout every subsequent game that he was a part of. And his backstory, the more that it was unraveled, showed that he was just an evil sorceress dickhead. He killed Scorpion's family and framed Sub-Zero for it. You know, he helped kill Liu Kang. He helped resurrect the Dragon King. Quan Chi is just a bad fucking guy. But he's got a really cool character design. He's like a pale Darth Maul. He's got this cool amulet. He's got this cool just mystique around him. That I think comes across incredibly well. And I like his, again, telekinetic moveset. I like the skull-centric nature of his special moves. His fatalities are brutal as hell. And I just like his own piece of the Mortal Kombat canon. I think as far as later villains go, you could do a lot worse with adding a character like Quan Chi. And personally, he's my favorite of the cast of Mortal Kombat Mythologies. The amulet. I have Shinnok's amulet. Whose amulet? He is my deity, ruler of the Netherrealm, and soon destroyer of your Earth realm. You know, as a kid, I really wanted to be good with Cabal only because of his look and design. I didn't know anything about his backstory. But if we're talking about factoring in cool character design, the gas mask is a striking visual. The hook swords are dope as fuck. And the fact that he is supersonic fast is cool as hell. I like Sonic. I've said that on multiple occasions. So he kind of fits the mold of stuff that I think is cool. But on top of that, they did give Cabal a pretty cool backstory. You know, I like that he has this evolving motive that goes throughout his entire story. You know, he starts off as a member of the Black Dragon, and in he was supposed to be in Special Forces pre-Burn. But due to his tragic accident, he became a good guy and he fights for Earthrealm. Again, a dynamic that continues to evolve, even in the reboot. You know, I like that he's a character with clear motives that evolve, that are clearly tied to himself. But I like that he's a character that grows as the story goes on. And again, he's just got some cool powers and a cool look that lend to some cool ass fatalities as, as you know, in tandem with that. I just really like Cabal. Out of the Mortal Kombat 3 editions, uh, he was easily one of the coolest initially that I had ever seen. Just take a bite. Clones are always kind of a talking point in fighting games, but it's usually just mirror clones. But in Mortal Kombat, they take clones to a whole nother level. Molina. She is, simply put, the complete antithesis of her original source. You know, Katana's this beacon of light and good, and Katana is sadistic, psychotic, evil as fuck. And I think that that's really, really cool. I, li- I like her sort of mystique of hiding her teeth behind her beauty, but using that as a part of her character. And I think that her teeth and her whole gnashing side of her visual style is horrifying in the best way you know Mortal Kombat has this roots in horror and I feel like they use it really well with a character like Melina I also like that in the later games especially she is super tied to the plot you know in the originals she was always like 
a, a servant or an underling of like Shao Kahn and stuff, but I like that in Mortal Kombat X, she's an integral part of the game's plot because she's the next empress of Outworld, you know, or wants to keep the throne of Outworld from Kotal Kahn. You know, I like that, again, similarly to characters like Kenshi, they just help flesh out her story more in the later games and give her even more drive and motive, in a way that I think is really cool. And again, her fighting style is neat as well. I like her use of the size. I think that she's an awesome character that I feel like uh, is truly one of the more evil sides and twisted sides of Mortal Kombat showed off in full splendor. Leftovers are fine with me. Leftovers? Yeah, I know. You were an error macro glitch. One of the things I love about Mortal Kombat is they handle palette swaps well, like another character I'll talk about in just a minute. Ermac, who started off even as a joke within the Mortal Kombat community, who was a huge rumored character dating back to the first game. Because Ermac stands for error macro, but a lot of the people didn't know that. So they saw Ermac in the game's code and thought it was just a hidden character. They turned that joke into a sick-ass concept for a telekinetic character, like I said in Kenshi. I like this character. I like telekinetic characters and Mortal Kombat, like I said with Quan Chi. But I also like how they took this sort of concept with Ermac of these a bunch of souls in one entity. So they use the pronouns us and we and all that stuff. I just like that. And again, similarly to what I've said with some of the characters, the telekinetic fighting style is really cool and I think comes across really well. I even like how he's portrayed in Deception because he is a very neutral party. But I like how some characters use that to vilify him in really mean ways. And yeah, I would not say he's leftovers even if Mortal Kombat Annihilation seems to think that he and somebody... Like I said, speaking of not leftovers... You killed my older brother. Now if we're talking about characters with a lot of depth and a lot going on... Dion is easily one of the most complex characters in Mortal Kombat, because he starts off as Sub-Zero in the first couple of Mortal Kombat games, and he comes back as the Sub-Zero in the reboots, and then he dies, because Scorpion kills him, and you would think that would be it. They replace him and just keep this new Sub-Zero as Sub-Zero, but no. Noob Saibot is born out of the death of Beyond. A truly sinister, dark, shadow ninja who pulls off really cool shit. Similarly to Kenshi, some of his, you know, abilities and throws involve, like, shadows and, and using versions of himself as opposed to telekinesis to fight from a distance. But especially in newer games, his design is dark as fuck. His voice in the newest game is cool as hell. Mother would be so proud. And I like that in tandem with being this character with a lot of lore, I like that he also gets to work with other characters throughout the franchise. Him and Smoke get paired together a lot, and they still are, even to this day, kind of partners with each other. But even on his own, Noob Saibot is a dope-ass, again, dark character with a really striking black visual style that I think pops really well in a game of blood and guts, the shadows also have a lot of coolness lurking inside of them. And Noob Saibot is easily, uh, again, one of the most complex characters in Mortal Kombat, if only because he started as one thing, and then instead of being just left in the dust, becomes something even cooler. Now, if you couldn't tell from that marathon when I was playing Street Fighter 3, Third Strike, and I was playing Ken, I like Ken. I like Ken more than Ryu. And who is Mortal Kombat's Ken? Kung Lao. The close friend of Liu Kang. Not having quite the same move set, but we're both trained under Bo Raicho. Kung Lao is just a cooler character across the board. I ain't got any hate for Liu Kang, or even for Ryu, for all that matter. But Kung Lao, man, he is cool as fuck. Dude's got that teleport move. He's got some cool ass combos in tandem with the stuff that stuff that sets him apart from Liu Kang is what I like about Kung Lao. He's got the razor hat. His throws look cooler. His fatalities are cooler because he's got that hat. And overall, he just seems like he's got a little more depth to him. Again, not to slap Liu Kang in the face because he's clearly got his own motives. But I like that Kung Lao 
kind of lives into this own shadow where he tries to aspire to be better. You know, his namesake is known for greatness. So I think it's cool that he wears that on his sleeve and tries to be better than uh, that and try to keep up with the namesake that he's had at his core. You know, he's another really cool fighter from Earthrealm that, again, is just sick as fuck. It's just sick as fuck. Those are $500 sunglasses, asshole. You know, when you walk around with a name like Jonathan and people call you Johnny all the time, you kind of get slapped to ask if you like this character. And I do like Johnny Cage. I think Johnny Cage is a pretty awesome character in the Mortal Kombat camp. Um, even though he's this sleazy Hollywood type, I feel like he plays off the character incredibly well. That old geezer's the final challenge? They might as well give me the belt right now. He is what Dan should have been, if we're being honest. And hey, if we're talking about representation in media, his character in Mortal Kombat 1 is played perfectly by Lyndon Ashby. He channels that cheeky Hollywood star incredibly well. This is where you fall down. Where do you get these guys? And I like how they've made him even more so in recent games, with some of his fatalities being even pop culture references. I like this character a hell of a lot. I think he's got a cool fighting style. I think his moveset is really cool in general. His special style of like the phasing and sort of stuff, the shadow kicks and all that sort of stuff are pretty neat. And I think he controls really well. He's a very balanced fighter in a similar way to Liu Kang. He's just a little bit different in a way that works really well for me. Plus he punches dudes in the balls. That's funny as fuck. <laughs> You know, we were talking about a lot of characters with a lot of depth when I was talking about Noob Saibot, but the OG character with a lot of fucking depth is Scorpion. Seemingly starting off as a bad guy because he killed Sub-Zero. He realizes where he went wrong and vows to be a protector of the new Sub-Zero. And I like that he has this sort of, again, similarly to Cabal, this evolving motive. You know, he's out not only for his clan, but for Sub-Zero. He is this denizen of the nether realm because he is this specter of fire. Again, if we're talking about cool ass looking characters, he's always got the coolest shit going on. In the first movie, his fight scene is easily the best. In the new movie, they got some cool shit with his origin. Scorpion's just badass. He is a cool character who's had the most consistently cool look to him. Even though he's just a yellow ninja, they've done some cool shit with that yellow armor. I love uh, that he gets to give true vengeance to who really did him wrong in the long run. And again, he's just, he's, a, he's an OG that OG'd so incredibly well. You can see a, even as much of a face of the franchise as Liu Kang consistent. Levels of prominence in the medium, in the franchise, and I love him for it. Scorpion's just a badass. Raiden, the god of thunder, and my go-to Mortal Kombat character, if I'm being honest, because his combos never really change much, they're really easy to pull off, and they're dazzling because he's the god of thunder, the almighty good compass in Mortal Kombat, the defender of Earthrealm, and just a badass looking motherfucker. In every game, he's got this cool look to him. Even in the older games, he had this cool vibe to him. I love his spark throws. I love his teleport move. I love his flying tackle. His fatalities, because they're all electric based, are shocking, dazzling, I should say dazzling, not shocking, as fuck. Hell, some people hate it, but I like Christopher Lambert in the original Mortal Kombat movie. You humans are so unpredictable. <laughs> It's so dumb, he's not the best performance in the movie, but I like him in it, I kind of wish he fought more, but I like that he's just kind of this guy, this god, that just keeps popping in, to just say what's up, before peacing out, you know, not interfering, just gazing upon Earthrealm's defenders. I don't know, man, I like Raiden, I think he's a cool character, he's kind of a dick sometimes, like a Mortal Kombat mythology sub-zero, but like... Or of a place called the Nether Realm. You better start believing in both! Because you're going to the nether realm, and you're going to bring back the amulet. He's cool. 
He's my favorite Mortal Kombat character because he's he's the god of thunder. Plus, he's got Kid Thunder. <laughs> and that was my list. What'd you think about it? Are you upset your favorite character didn't make the list? Let me know your favorite characters in the comments down below. And if you like this list, be sure to give it a like. If you want to see more of my music gaming and general notary content, be sure to subscribe. Special thanks to my patrons if you want to join the ranks to get early access to content, exclusive content, or to help drive the community. It's linked in the description. I'm going to get out of here, though. Thank you again so very much for watching. I've been Rack. You guys are good in these last situations. And I'll see you another day.